Wrap up. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I remember a couple of years ago, he called me one day and he shared with me something beautiful he saw, like a documentary, and he was telling me about uh, the possibility of growing plants without soil and everything, coming from a legal perspective, and with the kind of background that I had, of course, I found it very, a little bit, uh, I had a little bit of disbelief, but you know, I listened to him with an open mind because I've known him to uh, be visionary and I know that if he's talking about something, possibly he has done his homework and I listened to him. And that was where personally my own sojourn, even into the agribusiness world today started. Pastor Debo Onofora came in contact with the technology incubation program as far back as 2014 when he came on board with a series of ideas, a lot of energy, and a passion for entrepreneurship. Over the years, BIC Farms Concepts has transformed through various products, various uh, concepts, and eventually has uh, moved to establish what is called an hydroponics technology uh, farms concept, whereby he is striving to address the issue of food uh, shortage, food shortage in Nigeria. Most farmers are above 50. Young people don't want to be, to be called, in fact, to be seen with farming, you know? Farming was punitive. When somebody commits an offense in school, it happened to me myself, you know, and you want to punish that person. You give them cutlass or a hoe, you tell them to go and cut the field, you send them to the school farm. They were using farming to punish people. So young people naturally don't want to be farmers. Now, how, how can you explain the fact that Nigeria is the youngest country in the world? The average age of a Nigerian is 25. Yeah, the average age of farmers is, is around 60. You know, you, you can't correlate that. Young people with all their energy, all their creativity are not interested in farming. They are interested in cybercrime. You know, so it's it's actually terrible. So these uh, concerns were giving me some serious headache. And um, sometimes in 2013, I, I was in my city room um, studying. So I, I got tired. And then I can still remember the time was about... 10 minutes before 12 p.m. So I just told myself, let me cool off my head and I switch on the TV set. So I changed the channel to CNN. And I just saw a crazy documentary that was ending. I saw that guy carrying something in his hand. Green, lushy. And I said, that's a fodder. Planted without soil. Instead of 90 days on the soil, it took me nine days to produce this. Man, that caught my attention. The tiredness left, you know. <laughs> I just came alive. I was like, what? Are you serious at all? So I took my phone. I went on Google. What soil is farming? What before that? What Can you grow crop without soil? I now began to see lots of content. I was like, what? I am I still on heart? Do you mean it's possible to grow crop without soy, guys? That was the first time I was hearing anything about that. So you can actually grow crop without soy. So the sleep left. The tiredness left for us. I think I, 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 I did a search overnight. And I was seeing all sorts of things. I was seeing content like the, the seven wonders of the ancient world. One of it, the Hanging Garden of Babylon. 
is, is a result of soilless uh, hydroponic technology specifically, you know. And I began to see a lot of things. I was like, what? Where have you been? So I was checking content relating to Nigeria. Nothing. Is there soilless farming in Nigeria? Nothing. Who is doing soilless farming in Nigeria? You know, I, 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 I was just searching. Nothing. But I was seeing a whole lot of content about soilless farming in the U.S., in Israel, even in South Africa and, and, and some other places. So I was like, wow, I, I think I've stumbled on something. I listened to him and was talking about how we can actually drive a change, how we can challenge some status quo, how we can actually, you know, let people know that uh, we could actually grow grasses and at that time i must hasten to say it was at the peak period or when uh, there was a lot of crisis in the country about farmers headers you know how cattle are disrupting farming operations because they need to feed and they need to eat and i was talking about how we can actually grow grasses it was fascinating it was intriguing you know but again I had to listen to everything I had to say and somehow I believed it was possible. I believed uh, we could do it. I believe we need to let people know and let people see that we, we could actually uh, feel uh, some, we could pass some knowledge to people and we could let uh, local farmers know that actually there's a possibility with hydroponics technology. It was also telling me how we could actually convert uh, like a kg of maize, a kg of grains into five, six, seven, eight, ten kg, I mean 10 kg of fodder. Of course I had to go through my own training and filled in the knowledge gap that I had to and the journey started from there. So I began to experiment on how to grow fodder. You, you'll be amazed at the first set of videos I created of for that production. They are funny videos, you know. So, when, when I perfected how to produce for that, just learning online anyway, I watched so many YouTube videos, I read so many things on Google, uh, there were so many challenges, I, I solved them. Initially, they were forming molds, you know, and I know molds, aflatoxin and all that will affect your animals. So, I was experimenting, experimenting, it took a long time, but I... I finally stumbled on how to produce, you know, fodder uh, without challenge, without mold and all that. So I came out and I began to tell some few friends that I think I found something big. And they were like, what, what is it? Some didn't take it serious, you know, but I, I, I didn't keep quiet. In fact, around that time, I went to one of the universities in the Southwest and um, I spoke with uh, one of the professors there and he said it's... Uh, it's, it's a waste of my time because Nigeria has so much arable land. Why are you thinking soilless? And I said, Prof, I, I'm thinking that um, soilless farming, see the way it captivated me. It will captivate a lot of young people. You, you know what I'm saying? And the Prof said, it's a waste of time. I, well, uh, about two years after, he, he came for one of our trainings. <laughs> I, I, I decided he was sorry that he, he didn't see it coming. Anyway, that, that was that. So that, that was how it started. Uh, we, I, start, I, I perfected for that production. And then, you know me now, everything I get to perfect, I start to teach people. So I began to teach a lot of people. I began to train people. I began to tell them, wow. So um, I, I think it was at that time that... Um, uh, the, the legal farmer, Barrister Mike, Mike came in. The next challenge for us was how are we going to let people understand or believe that this idea of growing plants not inside soil but on substrate, how are we going to let them know that it's actually a possibility? So we started by, okay, strategizing. We need to let uh, go on air. We need to hold seminars, we need to hold events. And we started from there, you know, people had doubts. People were like, how possible is this? We showed them samples, we would have to travel sometimes 
from Lagos, from Abelkuta to Abuja and to some parts of the north where we had serious, serious challenges. Just trying to sell an idea which was not common in the Nigerian and even African uh, setting, people doubted. But gradually, one step at a time, one step at a time, we were able to convince people uh, from the down south to up north. We started holding series of events, started talking about how this is, how this is possible, started talking about the advantages in, you know, adopting this kind of, uh, this model of farming operations and everything. You know, I'm from one person to two to three. I remember also at that time, uh, the, the, the federal government was talking about importing grasses from Brazil. And we're talking within ourselves that, look, we can tell these people, why, you, why do you want to bring grasses from Brazil to solve, uh, what do you call it, farmers' elders' problem, when we can actually train people, e equip, empower youths to actually go into this, teach them, pass information, pass knowledge to them, and let them see the beauty of this technology. We had several we had several meetings that didn't come to fruition in Abuja with some top uh, people in the ministries, but we didn't relent, we didn't give up. I organized the first set of training on cellular farming in Nigeria. Uh, I organized it in Abelkuta. That was in 2014, using Naba Sanjo Presidential Library. And um, that training had about 12 people, people from Benin, Abuja, you know, Kaduna, uh, nobody from Abeokuta, nobody from Ogun State, nobody from Ayo State. So when, when we saw the 12 people came, and um, their complaint was Abeokuta was not easy to be assessed. We had to fly to Lagos, then find the vehicle to Abeokuta. So I spoke with my team and I said, can we find a way to, you know, to take this training to Lagos? The only thing we perfected us at that time, 100% was fodder. And then uh, we have started to produce some few crops. I think I was growing peppers and peppers with just water, tomatoes. Uh, if you if you still see that video of one bucket like that that had pepper, and uh, it it was fascinating, you know, some tomatoes. You see the root in water. Uh, we grew some crops, you know, so that was like wow. If we can do this small thing, we can do the big one. And I, and I told them that, okay, so can we take this training to Lagos? Based on the demand of some of the people that came, they said it was really not convenient for them and um, it would do better in Lagos. So we, we took the challenge and um, we took the training to Lagos. I contacted a friend and then who, who has an office with a space to sit, I think about 40 people. So I was like, will 40 people come for training? Uh, I looked at the logistics and what to do, and um, I think we set the training fee for 30k, 30,000 naira. I think so, yeah. Um, and we chose Lagos, a friend's office at Ogba, and we organized this training, and we publicized it. Then we began to, to get the alerts. Pound 30k, pound 30k. Uh -uh. People are paying, you know. Pam Tatiki, then call. Ah, uh, hello, sir. This is, this is, this We saw your training. I'm coming from Abuja. I'm coming from Sokoto. I'm coming from Bono. I, I thought you're coming from where? Bono. I'm coming from Kano. Come from Kaduna. I was like, what's happening here? To call the long story short, on the day of the training, we had 43 people. 30 from Far North. And somebody said, Lagos is too far for us. Why not come to Abuja? We took the same step of faith. We went to Abuja. And then we had the first train. Bam. Like 50 something people. All from the north. Few from Lagos. So we began to laugh. We had training in Lagos. We didn't come from Lagos. Now you flew from Lagos to Abuja to attend training that we have held several times in Lagos. You know, Nigerians can be funny anyway. So, at, at that particular training, that first training in Abuja, somebody came and said, you need to come to my house. I want you to go and meet. I want you to, you need to follow me somewhere. I want you to go and meet somebody. So, myself and my partner, we, 
we decided to follow him. Nigeria was not too dangerous, though a lot of risk. I remember I, I called somebody and I shared our location. This is where we are. Then we go to Aso Drive, you know. And he was asking, do you know a particular number? I said, I don't. He said, you don't know it? I said, I don't. I said, okay. So when we got to that number, ping, ping, on at the gate, the gate was open. They drove us in a building. Then it had a sit-out, you know. So it took us to the sit out and we sat there. Then some five minutes, I guess somebody walked from the main building. As I was coming, I looked. This face looks familiar. And then the man smiled. He smiled and I, I also smiled and I was like, come, is it the person I'm thinking about? And my partner touched me, I said, Ribadu. <laughs> Malam Nuru Ribadu. What? You can't put us to Malam Nuru Ribadu's house? What? Ah. On this island family? Ah, okay. That was how Malam Nuru Ribadu came. The famous EFCC chairman. Wow. So he stood up, shook our hands, and said, Young man, I've been following you for over a year. I said, what? Since I started posting on the social media, I've been following you. So when I heard that you are coming to Abuja, I told him to go there. I said, wow. I can still remember vividly. We, we, we snapped a picture with a folder tray and he said something. He said, I want to be part of the story. He said, wow. So our first home garden was built in Malamu Ribadu's house in Aso Drive. I can remember we built floating gardens, for that system and so many things. It, 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 that uh, gesture was one of um, the biggest encouragements for the Solis family story in Nigeria because he believed in it. We, we spoke with different groups, we spoke with farmers, we traveled to different places trying to convince them. We had a whole year and even more of uh, trials, uh, doubts and everything. But the beautiful thing today is what we are seeing today. What we saw as an impossibility, what we saw as what could never, what people saw as what was unbelievable, what was strange, we can see the results today. Today, we have a perfect model. We have learned from our failures. We have grown. We have, uh, we, we, we have learned and we have gotten to a stage where we can tell people categorically that look, with this principle, you can do things this way, you can do these things, I mean, uh, things this way. You can plant uh, your tomatoes, you can plant cabbage, you can plant whatever form of uh, vegetables that you want. You can grow grasses for livestock and a whole lot of things. And years after, you can see where we are. It wasn't easy, but we didn't give up because we believed that it was possible. We invested so much in knowledge, locally and internationally, Several travels, you know, outside Nigeria to learn, to see things, you know, by the managing director of the company, coming back to pass information, pass knowledge to us, which we also took to several parts of Nigeria, Kano, Kaduna, Zaria. We traveled wild to let people know that, look, this was possible. You cannot imagine my joy after we transplanted into the system. It was a floating bed system. And it, his gardener called me and said, you need to come and see what's growing here. <laughs> you know, I and I was seeing the growth. I was like, wow, you mean this is real? And it was growing. I remember one of the plants in um, in that system was a squash. And the squash started fruiting, growing big. The lettuce, the cucumbers. I was like, wow. So it, it was a huge experience. I, I, I would really say a big thank you to... Um, Madam Nuru Rebadu for that kind of support, you know, which actually builded or let me say boosted the morale 
and um, gave us a lot of confidence. We shared the pictures in the social media and all that. And people were like, what? So you can actually grow without soil? Because we didn't stop. Because we didn't stop believing. And because we were so convinced that what we saw outside Nigeria, we can actually duplicate it here. Gradually, people started believing. People started investing. People started doing, uh, uh, practicing some of the little things we are uh, we were telling them, you can have it at the back of your house, you can have uh, food gardens at the back of your homes, you, can, you don't need to have very big farms to actually uh, grow your food. We will sell to people that, look, you can actually plant uh, whatever you desire to eat, even on subsistent farming, on subsistent uh, level. Then those that want to commercialize it, we have perfect models today that can help you scale whatever it is you are doing. We can tell you, matter of factly, we have successfully gone through our trial period. Then something happened. Uh, <laughs> it is actually expected. We, we began to have certain issues. Crops started dying. They will grow to a level and they will start dying. Uh, I, don't, I don't want to talk about too many uh, technical things to growth. But one thing I could remember is, we started having problem with toxicity at the root zone you know when you try to adjust for ph we were using a certain material that was it will bring down the ph but it will add toxins to the root level of the plant so the plant will start dying and i was asking myself what else can we do what else can we do another part of it was um we were building greenhouses this came out of sheer imagination I, I think I saw some few greenhouses, I tried to study it, but I didn't get certain components on the structure. Yeah, we built a very strong structure, calling fabricators, uh, welders, we all brainstormed together and then we tried to build greenhouses. But you know, when we built these greenhouses, at a certain time, they were coming down, especially during rainy season. You know, you, you, we were actually sewing like the UV cover and nets. We we're sewing them together. When every wind comes, boah, there grows the greenhouse. So the, the pressure began to mount up and clients began to say, what's happening here? You know, the debts just started rising. It was like, my God, what are we going to do? So I, 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 I knew it's time to learn more. And I began to look outside the country. Okay, is there a school where I can actually learn the act of growing without soil? I've studied a lot of materials. Then I found somebody online. He's an Israeli who um, had written a lot of journal, a lot of um, article in different top level hydroponic journals. And then I followed the guy. Then at the time I, I contacted him. And I discovered he lives somewhere in Cape Town. He, he has an uh, hydroponic school called Hydroponics Academy. So I got in touch with him and I said, I need you to train me. And then it sent me the school fees. I looked at it. I said, wow, where would this come from? Well, um, we, a partner came on board and he said, let's fund this. You need to go for it. You know? And that was how I went for it. And um, going to Hydroponics Academy in Cape Town did a lot uh, to the success of soilless farming in Nigeria. Right now, we can almost go on auto cruise, on auto pilot, adopting methods that are convenient, that are beautiful, uh, precision farming, hydroponically grown. You can see all we have here. No so I mean, no soil. They're just substrates and they're beautiful. The plants are, you know, there are no infestations, there are no diseases, you have lesser things to worry about and, you know, it's, it goes on and on. It was a huge, massive uh, breakthrough that I got from the training. I, I really want to say a big thank you um, to uh, my teacher, Ben. Uh, unfortunately, Ben is no more, you know. When I met Ben, 
Ben said, Deba, I've been following you after you contacted me and I told myself, this is a young man with a lot of passion. We can do a lot in Africa. As at that time, Ben said he had visited Nigeria and he met with the government and he told them a particular plan he had for the country. But, you know, they didn't encourage it. He, he had um, a contract to develop certain tomato for Ains. That's the biggest ketchup manufacturer in the world, in Africa. And he felt Nigeria should be very useful and instrumental to, to this big project. But it was not encouraged. So he went back and he was doing his bit in South Africa there. And I told him, Ben, we can make this dream come true. We can do this together. So we began to strategize. And um, after I spent, after I graduated from the school, you know, I came back to Nigeria and I told Ben, I think we need to do a sort of collaboration so that we can take uh, the soilless farming um, dream to the next level. When I produce air now, everything changed. The problems we were having, I found a solution to it. We started, that was when we started building commercial farms, you know. So uh, I would say we didn't just start hydroponics, we started a commercial uh, success, uh, sorry, the commercial soilless uh, farm uh, or growing aspect, majorly in this country. We were the first set also to build commercial hydroponic farms. We're now building 240 square meter greenhouses and all that. So anytime I have issues, I get in touch with Ben. Oh, my nutrient solution mix is having, so I just do this and all that. So I remember I had a particular challenge and I sent him a message and um, nobody responded. After about a week, I just got a message. Your Ben is no more. I said, what am I speaking with? He said, Marlene, Ben's wife. I said, what Marlene? We lost Ben. I think exactly a year. After I left Hydroponics Academy, I was in 2017. Um, it was a huge issue. I, 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 it was as if a part of me died because I just thought about all the dreams we were planning for. What's going to happen? So I told Merlene, that's Ben's wife. I said, Merlene, I'm going to keep Ben's dream alive. Hydroponics is going to blow on in Africa. I can tell you that. And I'm going to continue to do my part. So I began to share pictures of what we're doing in Nigeria with Merlin. Particularly, day, Merlin called me and was crying. He said, Ben told me about you. He said, there's a guy in Nigeria doing wonders. And when she started seeing the pictures and, you know, and so many things that uh, we are doing at BIC, he said, oh, how I wish Ben is still alive to see all this. I said, don't worry, Ben actually didn't die. Because his dream lives in me and it continues. And because of what happened to Ben, I also made a strong resolve to train a lot of people. I discovered that training is key if we are going to build a major industry and then towards solving a uh, hunger problem. So I told myself I will replicate myself in a lot of people. So I intensify our, our training, develop a better model uh, with what I learned from Ben. And you know, so we, we now started the commercial hydroponics uh, masterclass. So we, we began to train a lot of people and it gave room to so many people in Nigeria who can boldly say we are doing something. I started my soilless farming journey um, through enrolling for the Graduate Agripreneurship Apprentice Program at BIC Farms. That was where I got to know that it's possible to raise seedlings, to transplant um, plants in a soilless medium. Initially, I was used to the soil medium, but a BIC Farm opened me up to the reality of practicing soilless farming here in Nigeria. And the six months training was a wonderful experience, an eye-opening one at that. Though it was challenging, but it worth the time. And in the course of the training, we were posted to different regions, and I came to Okeo Farm, and I completed my training year. Although I have an agri background, but I wanted something new. 
I wanted to see something different from the old way. So I had to put in, I do tell people it all started with the training. Six month training, rigorous training to be then, but now, glory be to God. The, the result of the training is speaking now. I met my father, I do call him my father, he's my daddy, Pastor Debo Nofuora. Someone said, when the student is ready, the lecturer will come forth. He, he really impacted me and I am grateful to him. Soilless farming is now something very easy to me. I see plants as my paddies. I relate with them daily. What's wrong with your plants? So I got to know so many things about plants, especially in soilless farming, greenhouse technology and innovation. Soil is losing fertility every day and um, there are a lot of challenges planting on soil. So farmers now are shifting to soilless farming, which is what the future holds. So in the next 10, 10, in the next 10 5 to 15 years, it will be very hard to plant on the arable lands because the soil are losing facility and um, everywhere people build facilities and everywhere are being encroached with buildings and we are losing out our our um, our fertile soil so it's a brilliant idea people should embrace a lot of people should investors should embrace soilless farming because it's what the future holds when it comes to food production his concept is so novel so innovative because it actually addresses the issues of youth unemployment it addresses the challenges of uh, food shortage without necessarily taking on the body of the drudgery of going to the farms. Because one, hydroponics is a form of technology. Two, it has the potential for massive, massive creation of employment. Three, he, it has the potential to improve the standard of life of the people, of the communities where we are in. So in other words, the idea of hydroponics technology that BIC Concepts is championing is a full, is a complete representation of the vision and the mandate of the technology incubation program that is being pursued by Technology Incubation Center at Belkuta. So, Technology Incubation Center at Belkuta and BIC Farm Com Concepts have become partners in progress through the creation of what we call an hydroponics cluster. Our vision or me and mission is to create an army of 600 hydroponics technicians across Ogun State within the space of the next five years. And we have started. Mm -hmm.